welcome to the CLAT Possible YouTube channel. Uh, let's start discussing the most important articles from the third week of April 2024. Uh, let's start off with the first one. These are important days and themes. So you have three of them in this particular week, which all three are very, very important. Um, the first one is the 18th of April, which is the International Day for Monuments and Sites. So basically, you are associating this particular day with the heritage sites, right? So International Day for Monuments and Sites. And uh, the theme of this particular year is Discover and Experience Diversity. Very, very important. The second one is the 21st of April, which is celebrated as National Civil Services Day. There is no theme for this particular year. The 22nd of April is the most important out of the three of them, although this is also extremely important and so is this. So the World Earth Day is celebrated on the 22nd of April and the theme this year is Planet versus Plastic. Very, very easy to learn this. Yes. Okay. So let's go on to the next one and let's start discussing the most important awards of people who are in news and let's understand why. So the very first one over here is Mamta G. Sagar. She has been honored with World Literary Prize and that's it. You don't have to learn about anything else with respect to the World Literary Prize. Her name is Saprishan Mamta Sagar and she is a Kannad poet and she has been given this honor globally. Now, if we talk about Salman Rushdie, he has unveiled his knife. So he is a very highly acclaimed author and he was obviously, um, uh, you must have heard of it, he was attacked in the year 2022 and uh, he lost his eye and of course he was hospitalized for a really long time because some people believe that whatever he was writing, they did not agree with it. And they took very, very drastic steps. And he has basically spoken about that entire incident in his book, which is called Knife. Right. So you can keep that in mind. Let's go ahead. Now, the next one is with respect to the chief of Navy staff, Admiral R. Hari Kumar um, K. Bath, the next chief of naval staff would be Dinesh Kumar Tripathi. Kindly learn his name. And Navy Day is celebrated on the 4th of December. Maybe you can write in the chat box, when is Army Day and Air Force Day celebrated, right? Okay. Now, the next one is from the National Security Guard. So, the National Security Guard is basically known as the Black Cats, right? And they are used in multiple different operations. They were basically, this, this National Security Guard was made post the Operation Blue Star Safeguard. So, Operation Blue Star was um, related to a man named Bindrawala and how the government uh, and the army at that time wanted to eliminate him and his supporters who had separationist tendencies. And during which, um, of course, you know, uh, the Golden Temple um, and the area around it was destroyed. That is known as Operation Blue Star. After that, you know, because keeping in mind there'll be so many internal disturbances because it set off a chain of events, right? And uh, actually the chain of events were there for a really long time. So point is that uh, this is when the National Security Guard force was made and the new Director General is all we need to know and his name is Nalin Prabhat. Nalin Prabhat, right? Let's go on to the next one, Corporate and Cultural Honours. So... Um, Advaita Nair, she is known for this particular company called Naika. I'm sure all of you must have heard of it, right? She's been recognized as a young global reader by none other than the World Economic Forum. Very, very important. Now, World Economic Forum, even if I don't tell you, you should know, you see, when was it made? Who is the founder of the World Economic Forum, right? And you should know stuff like that. Where are the headquarters of the World Economic Forum, Right. And of course, the Davos Summit is something that we've done before, which is also related to the World Economic Forum. So kindly keep making those notes on your own. The second one is the Lata Dinanath Mangeshkar Award. Well, I've written Amitabh Bachchan, but you know, in the fourth week of April, even Randeep Hudda uh, received this particular honor. This is, of course, on the name of um, um, the late Lata Mangeshkar. The next one is just one liner more ailed than CLAT oriented. Uh, GMR Hyderabad International Airport has been adjudged as the best um, airport staff by Skytrax. So that is something which is more ailed than CLAT. Nonetheless, not very not important. Of course, it is since we are sitting for both the examinations. 
this seemed to me very, very cool, right? I don't know what you think about it. So we've had the Miss Worlds and the Miss Universe and X, Y, Z. And now we are going to have Miss Artificial Intelligence. Like I'm not even kidding, right? So that's going to happen. And the judges would be, some of them would be already AI uh, avatars and some of them would be human judges, right? So that's going to happen this year. Let's see when it does. Uh, the next one is the Aryabhat Award. Uh, it has been given to Pavaluri Subarao, who has uh, contributed a lot to Indian mathematics and astronomy. So Aryabhat was uh, an ancient Indian mathematician, also an astronomer, some also known as, uh, you know, call him a physicist. So our very first satellite, which was made by ISRO, right, was also called Aryabhat. Very, very important, right? So you can keep that in mind. And we... Um, you know, launched our very first satellite using the Soviet Union's uh, launch vehicle Cosmos 3M in the year 1975. So that's something that you can learn. The next one is to do with you, you uh, little students, actually not really you, maybe, you know, it is from the next academic session. Uh, this one is applicable right now. So what is it? This is known as the permanent education number. Now, you do understand and you do know that, you know, the national education policy was made. It has been made three times, the latest being 2020, wherein they spoke about something called the academic bank of credits, wherein a child can go from one boat to another or one school to another, or he or she can keep all of his, you know, records since um, Bachpan. All of that can be, you know, accessed via a simple ID, right? Now, within that, of course, that's called the APAR ID. But within that, now they're making something very mandatory. And that is known as the permanent education number. Now, this is under the entire vision of the government, which is one nation, one student ID, right? So, which will help the transition of a child between one school and another. The child will be able to judge in a way, you know, he'll be able to understand that, uh, let's say, uh, X percent in this school is equal to how much percent in that school under that board, right? So, it makes the transition very, very easy. You just have to learn the full form of this. The second thing is the APAR ID that I was talking about automated permanent academic account registry right so the name says it all it's uh, an automated account uh, where you'll have your permanent academic uh, record right so it'll be in the form of a registry so that's what that is what are the benefits of course like i said it links it to the academic bank of credits and bank of credits should not just be on you know, it can be on the basis of multiple different factors, right? They still have to make that ease of school transition, blah, blah, blah. I think you've I've made my point. Let's go ahead. The next one is with respect to same-sex marriages rights in India, right? So last year, there was this case called Supriyo Chakrabarti versus Union of India. Very, very, I mean, it was something that everyone was talking about. People were thinking, yes, you know, same-sex marriages shall be recognized in India, and well, the, the judiciary gave a, a decision on the basis of doctrine of separation of powers. They did not do a judicial overreach in the sense that they basically said that, listen, we are going to be interpreters. We are not lawmakers. So in case, you know, such a law needs to be made, it needs to be made by the legislature. But meanwhile, what they did say was that we will look into the, um, you know, the, the kind of, we will try to do a little bit of society sensitization towards same-sex couples, that is one. And secondly, we need to look into the kind of discrimination that they are facing. And so to that effect, the Supreme Court has, in fact, made a committee under um, Mr. Goba, and we'll read that in some time. So the one, the first thing that you have to learn from here is Supriyo Chakravarti versus Union of India. The second thing is, of course, like, you know, I told you that they basically said that we can't give you the right of, we cannot recognize your same-sex marriages. The law for the same needs to be made by the legislature, which is basically the doctrine of separation of powers, right? Anyway, so um, they did say that we will make a committee and we will look uh, into the concerns of the LGBTQIA plus community. And the chairperson is Union Home Secretary Rajiv Gobba. Matlab, he used to be a union. I mean, he has been a un union home secretary for a very long time, right? So uh, Rajiv Gobba is the name. You don't need to learn this, though. The last thing over here is Navtej Singh Johar versus Union of India, which basically decriminalized sexual intercourse between homosexuals. So, uh, you know, some pe people basically say that this was a step ahead and this is a step backwards, right? 
But however, you have to understand that marriage is a very social concept, right? You get married because you want to be termed as a couple in the society. It's inherently a very, very societal thing. That's how you get married, right? So hence, whether the society accept that or not will be decided by the legislature is what the judiciary says. However, these people will look into the concerns of the community. So that is one step ahead. Now the next one is Brahmos Mizail. Brahmos Mizail ke baare mein pehle spad lo, fir uske baad hum log dekh lete hain. Dekho, yahaan pe jo range likha hai, mein ye nahi kari ki aaj ki date pe yehi range hai. Matlab, baut upgraded versions bhi hai. But this Brahmos Mizail has just been sent to uh, another country and that is what makes it important. So we are talking about the Brahmos Mizail that has been given to the Philippines, right? Philippines is the country that is uh, also one of the countries that's upset with China because of the South China Sea and many other reasons, right? So, uh, range is 290 kilometers. The speed is Mach 2.8, right? Uh, 2.8 times the speed of sound, right? And it can be launched from land, air, sea, everywhere. It can be utilized both day as well as night. And the name Brahmos comes from Brahmaputra, which is India, and Moskva, which is Russia, right? So it's a Indo-Russian initiative. And now what has happened? The very first delivery has been made to the Philippines, right? Um, do we have to learn how much money is involved? Well, not really, but uh, there's no harm. You can know that it's a little less than 400 and a little more than 350, right? So yeah, so that's basically it. We've done that. All countries, beta, jo bhi mein karwa rahi hun, uska capital, uska head of the state, you should know it. Agar head of the state bhi nahi pata, to capital definitely karo. That may be the starting point. Then we can go on to the head of the state. So there is this uh, city known as the gift city. First, let's talk about what is the gift city, right? Uh, gift city is a place, firstly, the full form, it's called the Gujarat International Financial Technology City. It is located in Gandhinagar, Gujarat. It is the first operational green field ka matlab hota hai, pehli baar infrastructure bana ho. New infrastructure, right? Brown field is making old infrastructure better. Smart city and international financial services center. Matlab ki ye wala jo area hai, yahan pe jab koi country aegi for all tax purposes, this will be considered to be a foreign land, you know, foreign currency shall be utilized over here. And that will attract a lot of companies, uh, foreign companies to come over here because, well, you know, then they are not really dependent upon the currency exchange rate at all. And you get brilliant facilities. So this is a gift city where another uh, agency has gone. Now, what is that agency? It is the Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency, right? So, naam se pata chal raha iska kaam kya hai? When was it made? 1987 under the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. You do not le learn the name of the cabinet minister just yet because let the elections take place and let them get their portfolios. The chairman of this one is Pradeep Kumar Das. The headquarters is New Delhi. And we know what it does, so we don't really care about that. Now, let's talk about this. So, expansion hua hai, I-R-E-D-A ka kaha pe gift city mein. So, usse kya hoga? Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency ko bohat paisa milega, bohat zyada investment milega. Agar unko bohat zyada investment milega, to wo aur bhi zyada renewable sources of energy ke projects kar paayenge. Jiske karen hum log apne renewable goals ko meet kar paayenge. So, it's a very nice step. Okay, so yeah, so you will get foreign currency denominated debts for financing green hydrogen and renewable energy manufacturing projects. So simple, both these things are clear. Let's go ahead. This one is an initiative by the Election Commission of India to increase accessibility during elections. And what have they introduced? An app which can be used by persons with disabilities. It's as simple as that, increases accessibility Person with Disability, 3rd of December is celebrated as the International Day for Persons with Disabilities. And the rest of it is just Gyan Beta. You don't really have to get into that so much. You know, so registration ho jayega, accessibility mil jayegi, home services mil jayengi. But yes, ECI as a topic is important. And usme ek sawal, ek passage ke andar, CLAT mein bhi poochha ja sakta hai. What is the Saksham app all about? So yes, you should know about that. Let's go ahead. The next one is to avoid, you know, so the double taxation avoidance agreement. Double taxation avoidance agreement in very simple languages. When there are two countries, in this case, it is Mauritius and India, and there is a transaction that is happening. And an Indian is sitting in India and making some money. 
and that money has you know i don't know is for services that he did in mauritius to aisa ho sakta hai ki tax laws mauritius ke kehte hain agar tumne services yahan pe di hain yahan pe cheez agar bani hai to yahan pe tax do aur hum bol sakte hain bhai yahan pe kamai ki hai to yahan pe tax do wo bechara itna zyada tax dega to double taxation nahi hona chahiye that is a dta it's not as if we signed it with mauritius we just signed an amendment we just made an amendment now what is the amendment for it basically combats tax avoidance tax avoidance ke menis ko khatam karne ke liye india mauritius ne apni already bani hui agreement mein ek amendment kiya hai what is tax avoidance tax avoidance is basically using the loopholes of law using the loopholes of tax laws right and uh, saving tax सो देखो एक तो हो गया बिल्कुल ही बदतमीजी विच इज कॉल्ड टैक्स इवेजन दैट यू नो वट एवर इज रिटर्न वी डोंट लिसन टू दैट एंड वी डू वट एवर वी फील लाइक डूइंग दैट्स टैक्स इवेजन एब्सोल्युटली इलीगल देन देर इज अनदर वे वेर इन यू नो यू यूज द लूप होल्स ऑफ लॉ यू एंड अप सेविंग टैक्सेस इट इज नॉट रियली अगेंस्ट द लॉ बट यू आर ट्राइंग टू अवॉइड टैक्सेस बाय यूजिंग अनदर रूट सो दैट इज व्हाट दे आर ट्राइंग टू कॉम्बैट अंडर देयर यू नो व्हेन एवर देयर आर ट्रांजैक्शंस हैपनिंग बिटवीन इंडिया एंड मॉरिशस so again country is there to capital head of the state very very important the next one is oh you can't see any of it so what what i will do is instead of looking at that you look at this there is something known as the unfpa and they have made a report which is titled interwoven can you guys see this yeah interwoven lives threads of hope ending inequalities in sexual and reproductive health and reproductive health तो बस कुछ नहीं उन्होंने इंडिया के बारे में बात की है कि सिंस 1969 हाउ हैव वी डन दिस हाउ हैव वी एंडेड इन इक्वालिटीज इन सेक्सुअल हेल्थ एंड रिप्रोडक्टिव हेल्थ इन इंडिया ठीक है ऑल यू नीड टू नो इज हु हैज मेड दिस पर्टिकुलर रिपोर्ट द आंसर विल बी यूएनएफपीए नाउ इफ वी टॉक अबाउट यूएनएफपीए इट वाज एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन 1969 द हेड क्वार्टर इज इन न्यूयॉर्क यूएस एंड द हेड इज नटालिया कैनम दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस फ्रॉम दिस एंटायर थिंग now let's go ahead the next one is a conference that was held in bhutan and the conference is called tiger conservation conference 2024 and uh, what is it for it is for tiger conservation obviously right they basically want to mobilize 1 billion dollars uh, for tiger landscape and to basically take care of tigers all over the world and this was done where it was done in bhutan under the patronage of queen wangchuk so queen wangchuk is important and they did this on earth day you just did earth day 22nd of april right the theme is important sustainable finance for tiger landscape so you can keep that in mind and that's it i mean you don't really have to get into that you know that it's bhutan so it's bhutan let's go ahead the next one is nepal so nepal has basically inaugurated a rainbow tourism conference nepal is only doing it what are they trying to do you know last year they basically made lots and lots of strides in uh, basically recognizing same sex marriages and now this kind of steps that they are taking it is all pro same sex marriages pro the lgbtqia plus community right and so hence that is why they started off with this rainbow tourism conference and that is it it is lgbtqia plus friendly tourism hub so they they are going to make a lot of money because there are a lot of countries that basically make it a criminal offense to even identify as an lgbtqia plus community member so there's that let's go ahead acha we are known for our spices right uh, mdh everest masalas and all of that uh, surprise surprise apparently allegedly by a hong kong report they have ethylene oxide which is basically going to kill us right so yeah so that is that is what they have said right and um, let's see let's see whether that actually happens does it get banned is it all bogus but let's keep it in mind is what i'm saying now meta has unveiled a new ai assistant and the new ai assistant is uh, you know 
uh, powered by Llama 3, Meta AI, and well, it has a high performance, aims to provide users with intelligent experience, blah, blah, blah. All you need to know that is that it is associated with Meta, right? The next is Oron Advanced Airborne Defense System. So, pehli baat to, agar Israel ki waise baat kare, right? So, this is the Iron Dome, if you can forget that. This is the Iron Dome, if you can see it, you know, there are all of their neighbors, Israel ke neighbors, sare unke against hi hai. To, jahan jahan se hai, ye, ye, ye jo Iron Dome hai, isko idhar hi intercept karke, isi missile ko idhar hi rok ke, idhar hi feng dega. So you'll be like, oh, you know what happened on the 7th of October? Why didn't it work? Then, because, you know, too many missiles at the same time, it wasn't able to take care of all of them. They, it has been operationalized since 2011. Now, this one, Oron Mars 2, is basically, okay, so first the name, Oron Mars S2, multi-mission airborne um, system, right? Now, this is given by the United States and it was recently used in intercepting the, they basically, um, uh, judge ki danger kaan se aa hai, interception ke liye hai. Aur inho ne intercept kiya tha Iranian missiles ko. So, and of course you do know because of the Rafa operation, there's a lot of uh, problem between Israel and US in the sense that, you know, US is saying we don't know whether those weapons that we have given were used in Rafa, right? So that is also happening. So you can keep this in mind. This is the Iron Dome. The next one is uh, Gaia BH3 black hole uh, that has been discovered, right, in our galaxy, which is the Milky Way galaxy. And um, yeah, so it is a stellar origin black hole. Stellar black holes form through the collapse of one single star. इतना सब कुछ करने की जरूरत नहीं है सिर्फ और सिर्फ ये लर्न करो कि ये ब्लैक होल हैज बीन डिस्कवर्ड ठीक है बाय द यूरोपियन स्पेस एजेंसी लेट्स गो अहेड द नेक्स्ट वन इज मेन 5 सीवी वैक्सीन रोल आउट इन नाइजीरिया दिस पर्टिकुलर रेवोल्यूशनरी वैक्सीन इज अगेंस्ट मेनिनजाइटिस नाइजीरिया हैज बिकम द फर्स्ट कंट्री टू uh, implement such a vaccine against meningitis. That is it. The name is important. The country is important. Then is D. Kuke. She has become the youngest ever uh, to win the FIDE candidate chess tournament. Candidate chess tournament ki wajay se now he is going to uh, sit with Ding Lijen, right, from China uh, in the World Chess Championship. In this year, the venue and the date has not really been decided yet. And he's the second to do this. Gokesh is the second to do this. And the first was Vishwanath Anand, right? Um, very, very uh, famous. And the first Grandmaster of India, he's done so much, right? He's also the only one, the, the first Indian to actually win the World Chess Championship, not once, many times, right? So he's very good in that. And he's also a part of FIDE. Let's go ahead. The next one is um, certain news across all different disciplines. So this is to do with the 12th national title at the National Karam uh, Championship. Barni Bar Jiti hai. Her name is Rash, Rashmi Kumari. And it was there in Gwalior. Uh, it was held in Gwalior in Madhya Pradesh. Then Rohit Sharma becomes the first Indian to hit 500 sixes in T20 cricket. This can change. Of course, it can. But as of now, it is Rohit Sharma. Then is uh, Nat Brunt and Pat Cummins are re recognized by Wisdom. So Nat became the first English woman. So that is also important. And of course, um, the male one went to Pat Cummins. The next is Emerging Star in Mathematics in Skating. So this is like a Mathematics Olympiad, which was there in Georgia. And the Indian team really excelled over here. And the second thing is called Limbo Skating. If you can see, you know, you really have to like, okay, this is this looks really tough, right? So uh, six-year-old girl from India, Takshi, has, uh, you know, made a new record in this particular thing. So that is important for us. And well, that is that. Thank you very much uh, for watching the video. If you found it into informative, kindly like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and I'll keep coming back with more such videos. Thank you.